Joe here, your reliability man, bridging the gap between best practices and the reality that you live every day on the shop floor. Today's topic is Reliability 101. This, this is a basic video. This is for non-engineers, non-reliability engineers, non-maintenance non people, but asset owners, plant managers, you know, maybe controllers, people just getting it, uh, into the reliability game, trying to get some understanding of what this is all about. This is not even an intermediate, intermediate class. This is basic, basic, basics. Okay, first of all, look down at the bottom right on your screen. Hopefully I pointed the right direction. There's a subscribe link, hit that. Give me a like, give me a subscribe, align all these videos and all these topics for future reference for yourself. Okay, so, you know, on the board behind me, I captured not all the words and not all the acronyms, but a whole bunch of them that are in the maintenance space that serves to complicate things. Joe's trying to simplify. Okay, you know, you know, SFMEA, you know, simplified failure mode and effect analysis. What is that? Asset hierarchy, you know, metrics. We got all these metrics of wrench time, PM compliance. Uh, what are asset owners? What are what's the difference between a reliability engineer and a maintenance engineer? There's so many terms out there that that uh, I think we've done a disservice to people. Now you can look up any one of these in in written form on from Google. That that's probably a much better way than me explaining each one here. So do that as you come across a phrase. What I'm going to do is try to simplify what maintenance and reliability teams are trying to do um, through an example. Okay, your family car, something everybody on this uh, video watching this uh, can understand. I'm going to use the approach to reliability for your family car. Okay, first of all, and this one's, this is often uh, skipped, but it's actually the most important by far. Uh, it's design and pre precision manufacturing of your car how it's built, how it's designed, how it's designed to be maintained, what's, what's the uh, life cycle that the engineers uh, designed the equipment to last. You know, that's your upfront cost. A lot of people try to minimize their upfront cost of a vehicle, but then they pay for it greatly in the long run. A good, reliable design and manufacturing process wins the day all the time. But most of us with our machines at work, we're stuck with what we got. But if you're buying a new machine, design, big deal. That's, you know, gotta take into account the life cycle cost of owning that asset. So then once you have the your car, you know, you can do reactive maintenance to that. That basically is run it to failure. An example of run to failure is, are the headlights and brake lights on your car. You don't, uh, you know, change them once a month you or once a year you let them go till they burn out my daughter's just burned out this week uh and then you fix it reactive maintenance you react to a situation you know uh number three is reactive maintenance plus some preventive maintenance and then i also added a computerized maintenance management system cmms there's an acronym for you basically is a computer that contains all the knowledge associated with uh, the equipment but PM is preventive maintenance. Typically, you know, well, it's time-based. Once a month, you do this. Every six months, you do that. You know, once a year, you, you take this action. You know, now these aren't perfect examples, but uh, oil change, typically you do that by miles, but that's just an estimate. You know, that's not based on the condition of the oil. It's what they forecast the, petition, the condition of the oil to be based on standard driving and who drives standard. It depends on, you know, what kind of environment you drive and how you drive. That means everything. So basically, an oil change is, you know, is a PM. It's something you do every, you know, uh, you know, 5,000 miles or 10,000 miles if you have synthetic. You know, wiper change out. You may change out your windshield wipers every six months. You may change out your, your uh, air filter coming into the car. You may change it out every uh, 15,000 miles. Okay, but it's basically time-based maintenance. And that information is stored in the CMMS. So the CMMS, is, you know, is the... Uh, uh, the file cabinet that says, you know, hey, here's what's due this month. Here's what's due this week to be changed based on time, CMMS. Number four, reactive maintenance. And reactive maintenance isn't bad. You know, like for headlights and taillights, it's the right, right uh, process. And, and PM, that's, that's not bad for an, an oil change on, on your car. You had CMS. Then you had RCM and TPM, two acronyms there. 
Um, RCM is reliability centered maintenance. And basically what you're introducing with this concept is looking at failure modes. How does the, the, do the tires fail on your car? How do the windshield wipers fail? How does the water pump fail? What conditions do they fail? And what, what can we do to countermeasure that? And what kind of preventive maintenance should we be doing uh, uh, based on those failure modes? So it puts some priority and some root cause into the, to, to the equation of, of a, uh, just a PM. So the PM, for example, I'll be dramatic here, on like your engine and changing your engine oil is a lot more important than your radio. You know, if your radio stops working in your car, no big deal. You know, if, you, if the engine stops working, you know, you're on the side of the road. So reliability-centered maintenance is putting priority and failure modes uh, and the effects of those failure modes into the equation. TPM, you know, it's basically, it's like operator care, getting the operators, the, the driver of the car, involved in how the, the car is running to get feedback to the mechanic, how to improve it, how to improve your car's operation, and some simple maintenance. For example, putting air in the tires would be a T, TPM activity. You don't take your car to the shop to have air, air put in your tires. Uh, so that's an example of TPM. Number five, reactive maintenance, PM, CMMS, RCM, TPM, and PDM. PDM is, all, is predictive maintenance. It also is called condition monitoring. This is where you add sensors that are better than your sight, smell, and feel. Uh, it's like an oxygen sensor. Uh, most new cars have this on there. It says something's wrong with your combustion system. There's too much oxygen going out the tailpipe. Something's wrong. You're not getting complete combustion. Uh, you also, every car for years, have had temperature gauges in it measuring the coolant temperature. So that it's a, it's a gauge to help, um, you know, with the um, uh, sensing of information far sooner. Okay, number six, reactive maintenance, PM, CMS, RCM, TPM, uh, PDM, I forgot to add that, and problem solving. Problem solving is really what you're trying to get to. Problem solving is, hey, my tires, they're supposed to be 50,000 mile tires. I didn't get 50,000 miles out of them. Uh, we know that, we found that through, through condition monitoring or through a PM, but why? Maybe it's how we're driving. Uh, maybe it's, you know, maybe it's the quality of the tire. Maybe it's the design and precision of the manufacturing, but it could be how the operator, most likely it's how the operator's operating the vehicle, but you add problem solving to the mix. So now you have some basic understanding of some of the terms and some of the philosophies of how to approach maintenance on your vehicle. Same thing applies to your equipment at your plant. From, from those systems that you have, you also have improvement. You know, you know so what do you, maintenance people are constantly looking towards how do, we, how do we train people to do precision maintenance, like laser align, uh, you know, a shaft or, you, you know, align your tires on your car so you, you drive down the center of the road and don't wear your tires. You know, how do you install bearings? How do you do things in a precision way? You know, also, how do you do efficient execution of maintenance? You know, uh, you don't want to spend a lot of money maintaining your car. You want to spend, you want to have the highest reliability possible at the lowest possible cost. So you're looking at things, how do we improve the efficiency of craft people? Well, you do planning and scheduling. You have you know, kitting and staging out there of all the parts. You have the right parts out there. They know how to do it. They know how to do the job safely. Um, and, the, and they, uh, you know, can problem solve if an anomaly comes up that wasn't planned. So how do you do that job as efficiently as possible? Uh, and then number three is problem solving. Major part of maintenance that uh, is really the last thing thought of uh, because, you know, plants are consumed in the daily life of reactive maintenance, PMs, and, and planned scheduled work, problem solving is where the real money comes in. You wanna see your, your cost drop out the bottom. It's you do, you know, have OEE teams, you have failure mode and effect analysis, you start working on mean time between failure, that's the average time between something fails. So if a, if a piece of equipment, um, like say uh, your tires will only last, <laughs> that's a bad example, but say they only last five years, five years, five years, five years, um, uh, you know, how do you get that to seven years? How do you get that to eight years? The mean time between failure work is where the big money is in any reliability program. So I threw a lot of things at you. I threw a lot of systems at you, threw a lot of acronyms at you, I threw all this improvement stuff at you. 
And there's lots of disagreement on where to start your reliability program. You know, some say it's, you know, start with, you know, square one, you know, better, good planning. What's planning about? Train the masses. I happen to fall in the camp of let's understand current state at your plant. Current state. What are, what's the current waste at your plant? What are you living with that, is a, that can, uh, we can uh, capture early and get some early gains, early wins, early so savings. So when we do need to invest some money later, we've already, you know, have two, three hundred thousand dollars in a pocket saved. So if I want to spend a hundred thousand dollars at a plant, you know, it's it's met with some enthusiasm, not uh, a bunch of doubt. So I'm a, you know, current state. What do we currently have? Not a cookie cutter. Read the book, page one, chapter one. Do this, do this, do this, do this. Uh, that works. But uh, all, my experience, all of my experience with that approach is it takes a significant amount of time to reap these savings. And I'm talking about years where if you start with condition monitoring, uh, not condition monitoring, start with current state and understanding the waste, you can get savings in weeks uh, and then ap apply the tools to the need to the waste. Okay, um, my challenge for next week is don't be intimidated by the language uh, that's used in the r &M space. You know, especially, uh, you know, asset owners and plant managers, we welcome questions from you. You are the deciders in where we spend money and where we put resources. Please ask those questions. The simplest thing to do is to go and see. You walk out to an, a piece of equipment on a Tuesday, if it's running, if it's down, whatever, and, and then under, try to understand basically how it works. You don't have to be able to tear apart the engine of the car, but be able to have some basic understanding how it works. Ask those questions. People love when you genuinely ask a question, you're trying to help out, you show up, hey, how can I help you be more effective? People love that. Go and see, folks, that's a big one. You know, begin your journey. This stuff isn't that hard. You know, you can send me questions uh, on YouTube or on LinkedIn. You can send them to my email, which is in the text here. Uh, you can reach out to me uh, as an experienced guy. And I guarantee I can shave years off your deployment. Thank you.